My name is uh, Clement Ogbenaya and I am the owner of Prince of Peckham Pub. I've always liked being out and about, but I think the biggest thing for me is my, um, I'm addicted to people. You know, I'm addicted to people and their social habits and I've always wanted to kind of be a, a creator of an environment where people can just be and let go. So I used to do promoting, um, ran a few clubs, bars, some you know, some you may not know of. And then I got to a point where I thought it was that time. I thought it was that time for me to really step up and, and own something, uh, a venue of, of sorts. Um, and I became a real fan of pubs, massive fan of pubs. Like for me, pubs are really like a cornerstone of a community. Um, it's the sort of place where you, you laugh, you smile, you cry, you party, all in one hub without leaving your doorstep or traveling too far. And um, growing up in South East London, going to school at, in Peckham, St. Thomas Apostle, this was an area that I always wanted to, had an, I've got an affection and affiliation with this area. You know, I spent most of my formative years and, I've, and I really wanted to come back to South East London and really do something. You know, something that we can all as a community be proud of, like one of our own has done, has brought something back. I'm a fan of Desmond's. Desmond's is one of my favorite shows of all time. You know, it was, um, can you imagine like a barbershop where everyone goes and jams and chills and spends days and talks to their cousins and uncles and their friends and they arrange nights out. Like, that's, that's really what, I was trying to create, but obviously not a barbershop, but do you know what I mean, that, that hub. And there was a character in there, um, Lee, the Peckham Prince. Um, and he was, a, he was hilarious, like caught me one minute, straight yard the next. Um, and yeah, and I, and, I, and I liked it and I thought, Prince of Peckham, you know, there's a, a nice ring to that. And I also think that, you know, in this area, we, we, we're all royals, like, you know, I think there's a, at the moment, it's like old Peckham is kind of like being forgotten and everyone's screaming about new Peckham. But I think like the whole of Peckham needs to, needs to be valued. And I, and I want this to be the space where everyone comes in and we're all the same. We're all one of the same, do you know what I mean? So yeah, Prince of Peckham was really, was really like, yeah, it's a great name. It is a good name, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so we, obviously sell alcohol, that's what, that's what pubs do. Um, we partnered with a street food vendor called White Men Can't Jerk, which has come with its own controversy, but um, White Men Can't Jerk are you know, a couple of white guys who I've known for a, a couple of years now. Um, a, the, the, the name is hilarious. Um, as soon as I, I saw it, I just started laughing. Um, but the irony is that they can make good food. You know, they make really good food and it's not, what they're, what they're, the great thing about partnering with them is they take care of a very difficult part of this, in, this industry, which is running a kitchen, um, which allows me to focus on the pub, the product, the bar and everything else. And I think um, that, that's been probably one of my saving graces. Um, but yeah, so we obviously provide food. We provide private hire. We've got a variety of, of areas and private rooms. One, this is one of them that we're in now. Um, private dining, function hire meetings. Like we're kind of, we're trying to be that, that one-stop shop for any, you know, for businesses, individuals in and around the area that just want some form of entertainment. I mean, my, one of the ethos is was, you know, South London, by South London for South London, but ultimately it's to create a pub that old and new Peckham can coexist. So having a boozer downstairs is important to me. You know, you want to come in and you want to, you want to feel like you're in a pub. You know, because I feel there's, like I said, there's something really, something really beautiful and endearing about pubs that's really ingrained in British society. And yeah, we've got like, you know, the lovely chandeliers, the comfortable seating. It's just, just, you know, if I'm being honest, I'd like my house to look like that, I'm being honest, you know. Um, but then upstairs, when we created this space upstairs, which was a little bit more, um, I, was in, I was actually, my inspiration behind this floor um, was the King's Speech. 
33 Portland Place. It was like really, you know, rustic and kind of like, not disheveled chic, but it's a bit of a, it was a bit of a mess, but still a bit cohesive. And I, it was, you know, it was, it was really important that I created a space that A, was comfortable, wasn't in your face too much, but also simple as well. You know, I, I never, I'm just not a wanky person in general. You know, like I'm not, I'm not like, you know, even how I, how I dress and, you know, how I talk, I'm just, just like to keep it as simple as I can, really, you know. And, and I used to work for uh, Armani years ago on the shop floor when I was a young one, selling Giorgio Armani jeans. And one of the things Giorgio Armani used to say was, um, eliminate the superfluous. Less is more simplified. Like, that's it, you know. <laughs> and that's it's always kind of stayed with me since I was 22, 23. I try not to do more than needed. Yeah, obstacles are, are like rife. I mean, first one is money. You know, how do you finance such a project? And I was really fortunate that I had people that, that believed in me, you know, that were willing to, to get on board and also, you know, it was, um, you have to be savvy, you have to be shrewd, you know, with the acquisition of your furnishings and um, et cetera, et cetera. So that was, that was a real challenge. Um, and, I, and I don't imagine it's going to be a challenge that's going to stop anytime soon. And you just have to just keep on, you know, you hit them, you fall back, you, you, you plan, you move forward, you avoid it onto the next one. You're always going to have obstacles financially anyway. The next major obstacle is staff. I call them partners. I don't. I try to. I try to avoid the word staff at times. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do um, accidentally call them staff. But no, they're my partners because you know without them, this isn't. This isn't possible. You're only as strong as the team in which you are. You have with you. So finding the right team is a massive, massive challenge. You know, motivating people. Motivating people without the obvious rewards of money. You know, when you're a startup business, obviously money is really, really tight. You know, you have to be more creative in how you motivate guys and girls. You know, I've got a member of staff, one of my supervisors, named Kai, fantastic guy. And he's done a really great shift. And he always wears Dr. Martens. He only wears Dr. Martens. He buys one pair of boots and he'll wear them, wear them and wear them until they're non-existent. And I just thought one day, how would he look in a pair of trainers? And then he worked, he worked this incredible weekend and I got him a pair of trainers. And it's actually his first pair of trainers he's had in like 15 years. And he's like, he's like over the moon. And it, it's, just, it's just those little bits and pieces that make staff feel valued. You know, so like staff, definitely it's a major, major obstacle. Um, the word legacy, you know, has, as I've got older, has really kind of like, every night it's kind of punching me in my head like legacy, legacy is important. You know, I, I don't, I don't just, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like be some, you know, bloke, uh, Nobel Peace winning guy at all, far from. But I think it's important that every single person is given the opportunity to live at least attempts to make a, a ripple, you know, be it small or large. I think it's just, just trying to, just, just try and add something to society, you know. So doing so that's that's my main motivation. I'm, I'm not, and I really I've been so overwhelmed by the support of like the local community with this pub. And it wasn't <clears throat> I wasn't expect to be honest. I completely was not expecting it. I wasn't expecting like you know the 67 year old woman um, who's lived in the estate across the road for all her life, and she comes across and you know this is amazing. She sits by the bar every now and then, and she buys the same glass of wine. You know. And it's that, and it's that support that is really that 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 that's a motivation for sure. I also want my the next generation of of kids, you know, black boys in particular, that like there's there's more there's there's more for us to do. You know, the obvious solution is sportsman, musician, and I just think there's more we can do to impact where we live. But also, like more often than not, people just want to make money. You know, people just want to, and I just think there's, 
there's so there's, there's so many other ways, and I think if if I can, you know, if a 22, 23 year old boy comes into this pub, which they have done, they've really been like complimentary and the support has been great. They come back too, and, and I and I really feel like oh, one or two of them are like actually, do you know what? You know, maybe there is another angle I can take into this to you know to try and get out, as they say. Um, so those are, my, those are my motivations, like the next, you know, legacy, the next generation, for sure. But also I want to be the best person I can be. You know, I'm not, I'm not a person who, um, I'm very hard on myself, you know, very hard on myself. I think a lot of people will say, oh, Clem, you know, you, this, is, this is good, this is great. But I honestly think everything can be greater, everything can be better. And it's funny to, to, to quote Sky's uh, quote, but like, believe in better, do you know what I mean? Like, I honestly believe that we can, if we can just have one, be 1% one better today than we was yesterday. And that's all, and that's all I wanna do. And I battle with that sometimes. But yeah, that, those, those are my, those, that's what really like, motivates me, those three things. So describe your pub in a few words. Oh, wow. Well, um, I can describe it in three words. Yeah. Prince of Peckham. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I, I, wow, I've never been asked that before. Aspirational. Cultural. And excellent. We've got this big banner outside that says, Welcome to Peckham. You walk into this pub, you're in Peckham. Because Peckham is a, a culturally rich area. It's not one class, it's not one race, it's not one age, it's not one sex. It's such a, it's such a mix and it's a beautiful mix and it's a mix I've grown up in and I really want this pub to represent that mix. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I want people to feel when they've left this place. Is like, obviously, when I said excellent before, that's the overriding strategy of this pub. Like We are striving to be excellent. You know, the products in which we sell, the, the staff in which we employ and their knowledge of the products in which we sell, the cultural excellence in this pub. Like, of, you know, we're going to work towards being as excellent as we can, but definitely to leave this pub feeling, oh wow, yeah, that was that was a real inclusive experience. I never felt, I didn't feel out of place. I felt at home at Prince of Peckham. Actually, that's a good one. I want people to f to leave feeling I felt at home at Prince of Peckham. That's 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 what I wanted to be. Sure.